Denver 7 News starts right now. A man is dead after an officer involved shooting near a school. We hear from witnesses and a student who heard the shots fired. Worried parents after a threat made at a Denver public school. What's being done tonight? And dog or wolf? The answer to that question will determine life or death for an Aurora family's beloved pet. But first, we continue following developments out of Westminster, an officer-involved shooting that happened in broad daylight. The suspect is dead, shot in Cotton Park. Denver 7's Mark Stewart talked to witnesses, and Mark is live this evening. Mark? And Shannon, you can understand why so many people here are talking. We're really in one of the bigger suburban communities in our area. Take a look at this park behind me. Police have just left. It's a place where people work. It's where they live. It's where they send their kids to school. Now people in this neighborhood are trying to get back to normal. Yellow crime tape blocks access to the subdivision in Westminster after a suspect is shot dead by police. It happened in the middle of the day at Cotton Creek Park as many families began their routines. I was pulling out of the driveway about 12.40, 12.30, 12 12.40, somewhere like that. And uh, I heard a crash, but I didn't see anything. Police tell Denver 7 the man was being followed by officers who are part of an auto theft task force. We're told the suspect pulled out a weapon after parking his car, prompting officers to shoot for their own safety. So when officers were investigating the auto theft, they addressed the suspect. He turned around and pointed a weapon at them. The officers did fire their weapons. And how many officers were there then at the time? There were four officers. Four officers. Yes. And all four fired back, is that correct? Yes. Police will not say what type of weapon the man had, but point out he was being followed by officers from Wheat Ridge, Lakewood, and the Colorado State Patrol, part of an effort to crack down on car theft, which has been an ongoing crime in our state. It's a very safe neighborhood, and it's a quiet neighborhood, and the park is always being used. It's, um, as far as I know, we've not had any trouble before. At this point, the suspect's name is not being released. However, several of we presume to be his family members have stopped by here and have been very upset and very angry. We are live in Westminster tonight. Mark Stewart, Denver 7. And our team coverage continues on this with Denver 7's Lance Hernandez. And Lance, you talk with students and parents at Cotton Creek Elementary. That school is on lockdown today. And many were surprised to learn about that via a telephone message, an automated phone message or a text message. What really hit home, though, for some of those parents and grandparents is when they received a message telling them to come to the school to pick up their children in person. Now, I spoke with one grandparent who was in the school when it was placed on lockdown. She said students were put into a room, the lights were shut off until the all clear was given. She said the process worked very smoothly. She also mentioned that some kids were a little more shaken than others. The kids are scared because some kids were out on recess when they heard the shots, so some of them are pretty scared. We were just in our class doing math, and I, then I just heard a couple shots outside, and I looked out the window, and there was a guy running. Now, we saw parents lined up outside that school with photo IDs in hand, trying to pick up their kids afterwards. Uh, authorities mandated that they have photo IDs with them. They called it part of their controlled release of students program reporting live here in Westminster Lance Hernandez Denver 7 and new at six some Denver public school parents nervous to send their kids to class It's because of a threatened report uh, at Grant Ranch School and Denver 7's Mark Boyle is in Littleton tonight with how the school's handling this one parent says she doesn't feel safe now sending her kid to this school after a threat was made late last week they got Denver police involved it's the last thing any parent wants to see sent home from school with their child. Christy Ford was stunned to find this letter in her first grader's backpack, warning of a threat by a student at Grant Ranch School. I'm very concerned because I'm dropping off my six-year-old daughter at this school. Um, I don't know if she's going to be safe. The district says about 45 minutes before class let out on Friday, one student overheard another telling their friend about a threat. We're told one of the students told the teacher and the student making the threat was pulled out of school. We have a chance to one, not only mitigate a potential threat, but two is that this individual is also one of our students. And if we need to make sure that we are providing all of our students with resources, specifically students that may be in crisis. Denver police say the student was cited for threat 
threats to injure. And the district says this isn't at all out of the ordinary for Denver Public School security. The district says of the 123 days of school so far, 105 threats similar to this have been made. We are confident in our processes and our threat assessment processes and our relationship with the local police department to mitigate these and we take them all seriously and make sure that our schools are safe. Ford, on the other hand, isn't so sure in that process. You hear so many stories about while well, the cops knew, the cops had tips, and then people end up dead. So I want to make sure that us as parents, we get the answers we want as to what kind of threat was made at the school or towards the students. Denver School says in order to protect the identity of the student, they can't give out any details of the threat or who the student is. Denver Police says their role in this whole thing is over. Reporting in Littleton, Mark Boyle, Denver 7. Now, also in that note that was sent home to parents, it says Denver police and the DPS Department of Safety are investigating, also saying, quote, I would like to assure you the safety and well-being of our students is our number one priority. New tonight in Brighton, an 18-year-old student from Prairie View High School is facing charges for allegedly making threats on social media. Police say Frank DeFiore had several weapons and had allegedly mentioned shooting students at the school in one of his online posts. And developing tonight, a heartbroken community wants answers. A fetus found in a dumpster at a Denver apartment complex. Denver 7's Molly Hendrickson is following developments on this, and Molly, just so senseless. Senseless because of safe havens like these. Under Colorado law, a parent can bring their newborn here, no questions asked. Two days after police made a heartbreaking discovery at this Lowry apartment complex, and there are more questions than answers. Who left a newborn in this dumpster, and more importantly, why? No one wants to think that there are women out there that would throw their baby away. But it happens. Linda Prudhomme of Colorado Safe Haven for Newborns says the tragedy highlights the importance of talking about Colorado's safe haven law. Enacted in 2000, it allows a parent to hand their newborn over to a firefighter or hospital employee. There are recorded incidents of every of of mothers of every age and every socioeconomic circumstance, every race. But the most common profile is a 19-year-old college student. She feels like she has too much to lose and, and she doesn't know how to manage it. So far in Colorado, safe havens have saved 51 babies and more than 3,000 nationwide. And while police don't know how this fetus died, Prudhomme hopes this tragedy may stop another mother from making the same hopeless mistake. It's tragic that these babies die when there's, there's a simple alternative. But you have to help us spread the word. It's, it's your neighbors and your daughters that might need to know. Make sure that they know. Police are still waiting on autopsy results to determine if this was a still or live birth. That could take up to six weeks. So far, there have been no arrests. In Denver tonight, Molly Hendrickson, Denver 7. And a tragedy in El Paso County. Two people found dead on the side of the road have been identified as Colorado Springs teenagers. These are their pictures. Their deaths now ruled homicides. 15-year-old Derek Greer and 16-year-old Natalie Partita were found Sunday just south of Fountain on Old Pueblo Road. Now, authorities haven't said how these two were killed, and they are asking anyone with information to please call. Mm -hmm. New tonight, we are now hearing from Colorado Senator Cory Gardner about the Republicans' new health care plan. As Senator Gardner says he's still reviewing this CBO report, which says that 24 million people would lose coverage. Well, he adds this. This is a quote. We are going to continue to work toward health care solutions that will lead to more choices and improved quality of care. Well, after more than two years, Colorado Senator Michael Bennett is talking face to face with constituents at a town hall. There was one Thursday in Colorado Springs, 1130 in the morning and another 145 in Pueblo. Lawmakers working to make life easier for transgender Coloradans. Today, a bill passed in the House which would allow people to change their gender on their birth certificates with only a doctor's note. Right now, you need a court order indicating you had a surgical sex change. So this bill now heads to the Senate. And move over golf and bring on a music festival. A three-day, six-stage concert festival could happen right here in Denver near Overland Park Golf Course. A meeting is happening right now inside the golf course clubhouse. Now, neighbors have already told us they're concerned. Organizers say this festival would bring up to 60,000 people a day this fall. 
The event would shut down the golf course and the city of Denver would be paid about a million dollars for its use. Now, the two key concerns with this event are parking and neighborhood safety. Organizers say they would work with RTD and ride sharing services. They also want to staff neighborhood entrances with Denver police. Today, a court ruling allowing protests at Denver International. In January, protesters gathered there at DIA against President Trump's travel ban. They were told to leave. The Tenth Circuit Court of Appeals said today such protests are protected under the First Amendment. The airport has to give out 24-hour permits to protesters. Before this, the airport required seven days of notice. Well, no more flights to Cuba on Frontier. You know, the Denver-based carrier is dropping Cuba service on June 4th. Now, so many airlines now are flying to Cuba. Frontier saw just too many empty seats. And speaking of flights, 132 of them delayed and nearly 100 canceled out of DIA today. And it's all because of that uh, nasty nor'easter that is slamming the East Coast. So make sure you double check your flights before you head out to the airport. A family is devastated after their dog Capone is taken away. He got out. Animal control picked him up. When they picked him up, they determined him as a hybrid wolf. And we'll introduce you to a Colorado mini horse with a not so mini purpose. The big northeastern storm continues to move out. I'll let you know when Colorado will finally get into a stormy weather pattern. Plus the Cherry Crickets making a comeback and not just in Cherry Creek. New at six, and I know this sounds a bit strange, but what if you found out your family dog is actually a wolf? Well, that is what an Aurora woman is dealing with right now. And if the woman's dog proves to have a wolf gene, he'll be taken to a sanctuary or possibly even put uh, down. Number seven, Sally Mabdu spoke to the woman today is in the studio tonight. What a story. Yeah, 10 years. That's how long Tracy Abato owned her dog Capone, and she says not once she ever felt he was a wolf hybrid. So she doesn't understand why now. He was just adorable, cute little puppy. And Tracy Abato knew she wanted to adopt the charming puppy she came across at the animal shelter 10 years ago. You're going to have to go back, baby. But today, her dog Capone is back at the shelter. He got out. Animal control picked him up. When they picked him up, they determined him as a hybrid wolf. And she says Aurora Animal Control won't give her the dog back until his DNA is tested to figure out if he's a wolf dog hybrid. He barks. He doesn't howl. He doesn't howl. <laughs> Tracy says when she adopted the dog from the Adams County Animal Shelter, he was registered as a German Shepherd. And in the years she has owned Capone, he's never been aggressive. He sleeps with my kids at night, so my kids are torn that he's not there with them every night. A spokesperson with the city says Aurora's ordinance prohibits residents from owning exotic animals. And if Tracy's dog is found to be indeed a wolf dog hybrid, he'll be taken to a sanctuary or possibly put down. Options that are heartbreaking for Tracy and her family. And this is a family member. We've had him for almost 10 years. He's grown up with my kids. It's it's devastating. I want him to come back home to his family where he belongs. Now, here is how this DNA test works. Tracy's dog could be a wolf hybrid if the DNA results detect hybrids within three generations. We're live in the studio. Sally Memdu, Denver 7. Sally, thank you. Very interesting. Well, the holiday shopping season is long over, but porch pirates are still pillaging the Denver metro. Here's the latest. This is Cherry Hills. Police say this man and woman took four packages from a home in February. A Cherry Creek, it's back. Cherry Creek's iconic burger joint closed in November because of a fire. And now we know it will reopen early next month. And there will also be a second location. Ballpark Cherry Cricket on Blake Street. Opening day for that has not yet been announced. And the sweetest and most adorable story you will see today. A mini <laughs> horse with a big purpose. Take a look. This is Frankie. For the past 10 years, she's been bringing joy and comfort to people of all ages living with all types of physical and emotional challenges. And it started when a woman approached Frankie inside a barn at her Parker home. I walked up and there she is in her wheelchair with Frankie, Frankie sticking her head through the fence into her lap. And the woman could pet Frankie. Frankie was sweet, had her head in her lap and her body didn't contort and didn't get painful. And tests confirm Frankie was a gifted therapy horse receiving the highest rating. Plus, she's just awfully cute and certainly touching anyone she comes into contact with. Oh, hum, another nice day here in the Denver area. Beautiful right now. This is the view from out at City Park. You know, so far, we've only had 19.3 inches of snow for the whole season. We should be at 40 inches at the moment. And that's exactly where Boston is 
right now after all the snow that we've had. It's still snowing and raining out in that area. We're behind Detroit. They've had 37 inches. New York City at Central Park's had 30. Chicago's had 26. We could use some moisture, but looking at this radar, you're not going to get it. There's not much to see out there except a few high clouds, a hint of a sprinkle of rain maybe up in Nebraska, but that is about it. All the action is out on the East Coast with that big nor'easter, and that thing is still cranking out snow and wind and heavy rain across the northeastern part of the country as it exits up into the Maritimes of Canada. Behind it comes a big high pressure system to settle down the weather across much of the nation for a while, and Colorado remains on the warm dry side. And we certainly were today at 69, 37 this morning. Normals are 54 and 26. The records are 78 and minus 10. Currently, with just some partly cloudy skies, still 67 downtown, 63 at the airport, 26% humidity, pressure rising 30.12. East winds at 11. Our dew point is at 27. So here's what happens tonight. We're just going to stay on the quiet side here with low temperatures, mild 40 in Denver. 36 at Fort Collins, a little bit cooler up toward Greeley and at Lyman, right around the 30 mark, both locations. By morning, we'll see lows that stay in the mid 40s at Highlands Ranch and Evergreen, up toward Broomfield and Boulder. Even in the mountains, temperatures only a few degrees above or below the freezing mark. So it's a very spring like pattern across the area. Across the state tomorrow, mostly sunny skies, maybe a few high thin clouds. That's going to be it and warm 75 degrees in Denver. Keep in mind that's 20 degrees warmer than the normal 81 down at Pueblo and La Junta. Front range numbers are going to be on the warm side again tomorrow with mid to upper 70s at lower elevations, mostly mid to upper 50s in the mountains. Overnight tonight, a few clouds are, I'll call it partly cloudy, windy at times in the foothills, low temperature at 40 degrees. For tomorrow, it's going to be a nice day once again with a high of 75, windy, warm, dry. Be careful at fire danger. We'll be up there once again. Even warmer Thursday, mostly sunny in 77. A minor little system drops through on Friday. Doesn't do much. Maybe a few sprinkles of rain in the mountains, but that'd be it. 68 back to 78 on Saturday, 80 on Sunday. First day of spring, 429 a.m. on Monday. It'll be 70 and then Tuesday starts to turn cooler. And by Wednesday and Thursday next week, maybe some rain and snow. Need to flip that switch. Indeed. Thank you, Mike. Roma watch day six. And there's more happening right now on Giraffe Watch. Lina will have the latest on the quest for a quarterback. And the Rockies wishing us a happy Pi Day, but eh, not all smiles at spring training. The injury bug has bitten again. That's all next on Denver 7 Sports Extra. Welcome to Denver 7 Sports Extra. Do you hear that? Do you guys hear anything? It's the sound of silence. It's all quiet on the Romo front. The Cowboys did not release Romo today. The Broncos didn't trade for Romo today. So we wait. But one thing is loud and clear. The Broncos don't have a left tackle. It's the most important position on the O-line. They signed two free agents, Ron O'Leary and Menelik Watson, and brought back Donald Stevenson, cutting his salary in half. They got guys who can play there, OK, but no real live clear-cut elite. Left tackle, John Elway tells us, trust in Elway. <laughs> He'll get it done at some point. We're not done yet. Um, so last time I heard, we don't, tea, I don't, we don't go to camp until July. And so we don't have to have that just fixed just yet, but uh, we'll figure out how to get that done. Rockies, wow, all of a sudden they're half the team they used to be. Catcher Tom Murphy right there, fractured his right forearm on that play in spring training. Out four to six weeks. Add that to Ian Desmond having surgery on his hand tomorrow. David Dahl, rib injury, can't swing a bat. And Chad Bettis leaving the team for cancer treatment. But Black says, yeah, it looks bleak right now, but not as bad as it may seem. With the exception of Chad, who looks to be, you know, late June maybe. Uh, but, you know, these other fellas, you know, they'll be back in April. And that's a little bit of a silver lining. And, you know, there's still, you know, there's three weeks left of exhibition games where, they're healing. All right. On this pie day, Rockies went all genius and brilliant on us. Tweeted out this picture. Three, one, four, one, five, nine, two, six, five, three, five, nine. Purple pie. There you go. Happy pie day, everybody. All right. The madness starts tonight in Fort Collins. CSU Rams round one of the NIT. At Moby against Charleston. March Madness action pictures tonight at 10. Now, the Nuggets won their third game in a row last night against the Lakers. Two top ten beautiful plays. Nikola Jokic, and no-look over-the-head pass to Will Barton for some uh, fire in the hole. And then to end it, this was the cherry on top. Malik Beasley with metal and brong. He built the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> Beastly. 
and nasty. Nuggets are still two games in front of the eighth and final playoff spot in the West. They are hanging on. All right. Dear life. Go. Yeah. Hopefully we keep it going. Keep it going, yeah. indeed. We Thanks, Lyle. Something. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right. Well, we thank you so much for joining us this evening. We'll be back here tonight at 10 and hope you will too. Good night. See you then.